one of the things that has placed me closer to my parishioners has been involvement in deaths of their loved ones. I moved in on Friday and on Saturday, I went to the funeral of one of our parishioners here. Her, his mother had died now. The uh, Presbyterian Church, the pastor there was doing the funeral, but I got to attend my very first funeral within 24 hours of having moved here. Um, I had always worked in textiles. Textiles were disappearing from Montgomery County, and I felt like um, medicine, but EMS in particular, be a good uh, career to pursue. After a couple of years, was fortunate enough to be um, hired with uh, Carolina Air Care out of UNC Hospitals. Became a flight medic, which had been a dream for a while. And uh, then in, uh, and in 1999, had the chance to come back to, with First Health to Montgomery County as the EMS director. When I first got here, my homiletics professor, my preaching professor, he says, pick up the phone book and call the funeral home. He said, the one that's used most often in your location, call the funeral home. Go down and talk to the funeral home director, call the people in the church and find out who has the power to say what kind of flowers can be placed in the church, what kind of meal is provided, what does the funeral home allow, how do they operate. He said, go ahead and do that. Two hours first on the sermon and then whatever it takes to find out what you need to know about life and death in your community. <laughs> Uh, my grandfather was the initial uh, uh, owner of the business and uh, initially started the business in uh, 1910 uh, and we've been here since. My father died on an ambulance trip in 1967 uh, while out on an accident scene. My mother ran the business until I could get old enough and get licensed and uh, come back to uh, home and, and serve my community. I started as an intern through a class in high school when I was a junior. And um, the lady who used to do flowers here, Estelle, she trained me. I had um, a couple of classmates to, um, well I had one that died in a car wreck while we were in school. and one to die in a car wreck right after we graduated and that being in this kind of business I had to you know be more involved than you know most kids you know with the funeral and things like that which was emotional but um you kind of, you, you're not, you shouldn't show it because, you know, the families, they come in here and they're upset, so you're, you just kind of hold it in to yourself. Started to, uh, at uh, high school, I, uh, they would get me out of school to come work a funeral, come home to work a funeral if we had one. Uh, I started to spend more time in the, in the preparation room at that time, uh, helping other licensees, and probably got my experience through, the, through Bob Ridge and Kenneth McDowell. The very first um, ambulance call that I was allowed to ride on before I had finished my certification, um, it was like, okay, we're going to let you ride, but we may have to make you sit in the front seat because you're not quite ready yet. And the call was for a child that had been struck by a car. And um, we arrived on scene. Um, the child was pulseless, not breathing. Uh, he was eight years old. And he was my first cousin's son. And I made it through that call. Um, I made it through uh, finding the family by telephone after we got to the hospital and having them arrive to the hospital. And the folks who've been training me were like, we hope this has not ended your career before it has started. And I said, well, I know that he got everything he needed. Everything that could have not 
maybe not needed, but everything that we had that we could do for him was done. So there was no guessing, and it was um, rewarding to know that that was available here and that I was able to help provide that. And so I think I kind of built my career on that. Ninety-five, um, Moore Regional Hospital was starting a critical care team, and I came back and interviewed there, thinking it would be an opportunity to move closer to home, and um, still utilize skills and take care of really sick people. And um, when um, when I was offered the job, and the human resources director um, took me on a tour of the hospital, we were walking through the hospital, and everybody spoke. Everybody said. Hello, how are you? Good morning, whatever. And each time I looked at her and I said, well, that was really nice. And, you know, after turning several halls and meeting several people, I said, well, that was really nice. And I thought, but that's the way it should be. People should be able to speak to each other. It was, it was fun to get out and just walk up and down the street and go into the different little shops and talk to people and get to know them. And, and then even some of the parishioners that I went to visit you know, I could walk from the parsonage, which is just down the street here, to wherever they are. Within a, I mean, within a mile or two's radius, you can see just about everybody within the church. Death claims are a very special time. We, it, it, those, those are really, really tough when when, I, when I'm involved in that because I always know my people. I'm, I never write insurance on a stranger. It's always somebody I've known all my life, it seems like. Uh, when, there's a, when there's a death, it's, uh, it's, I, I'm going to know the entire family, that person and their children and grandchildren, or sometimes if it's a young person, I know their parents and grandparents, and so it's a little it, in a community like this, I just I'm just involved with all of them. Uh, so it, it's just a very very touching time for all of us, for our entire staff at this office. Uh, we're we're just involved. We're going to visit with the family. To we take food. Uh, we're at the funeral home with them. We collect the death certificate and we get the check and do the appropriate thing with it as soon as possible. We really do EMS in Montgomery County because we know every patient or we know their neighbors or we know their friends or our children go to school together so it's different when you take care of people that you know. You're, you're not just going through the motions of providing patient care, you're taking care of all of their emotional needs and their family's needs at the same time so it's exciting to, to be able to do that mm -hmm. at home. I think what's really special about a small church, a small community, is the fact that they come together. It's like Joe this morning. My treasurer called me at about 8.30 to tell me that he passed. And I am sure that before the words even got out of her mouth, the whole community knows. And the fact is that they will gather around those that have suffered this loss and they will walk with them, not just during the time preparing for the funeral and, and just immediately after, but I've seen, especially some of our older ladies in the church, and even some of our older gentlemen, pick up the phone and say, would you like to go to lunch? Would you like to go to supper? Uh, let's go get a cup of coffee. Let's, let's, just, let's just be together today. Are, are you doing okay? And if you're sad, let's, 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 let's get out of the house. And they support each other that way, not just for a short period of time, but for the ongoing days and months and years to come. A small town like Star, it's, it's just such a tight-knit community that everybody feels the pain and everybody helps carry that burden.